Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Nothing, nothing. You know, Madam. Man, hey, man. I'm hey. I done pulled up in Houston, man. Hey, I got. Oh, hey, no. And I'm here with the legend. You know what I'm saying? It ain't only just legend clothing, but I'm here with the legend, man. Mm -hmm. My Thank boy Don Key. Hey, y'all might know him as Lil Key Key, man. But hey, man, this dude is here, man. We finally made it. And I'm glad about it, man. Thank you. Thank y'all for having me. Man, you wanted the big dopest. Big respect. Big respect for the podcast. Man. Oh, are you, you, yeah. you watch it? You watch it? LD don't give me no choice. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to LD for do, holding it down, right? LD going to make me watch it. <laughs> no. I love he tuned, LD. He tuned, he tuned me in the more gossip than anybody <laughs> Anybody in the world, but that's my guy. Man, hey, man. So, man, just good to be here in Houston, man. I love, hey, man, I love the spot, man. Oh, thank I'm, you. I'm going to be real with you, man. Mm -hmm. I just love and appreciate you for letting us come in here and set up. Hey, oh, man, man, just thank loving you. the whole vibe. Just want to make sure, man, hey, man, that we give you your roses while we here, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, man, that's love. I man. Y so, I know how you do it. I ain't going to even trip. Yes, yes, she, yes. Boss lady. <laughs> I like to take it way back. Because I, I like to fall in love with people for who they are and not really just always for their craft. Mm -hmm. So I need to know who you were before you were Lil Kiki. I need to know about your parents, your siblings, where you grew up. I mean, give me the whole history from as far back as you can remember. Um, Lil Kiki is Lil Kiki. Always been uh, Lil Kiki. Yeah, he's not. it's not a stage name or anything like okay. that. It comes from my middle name. My middle name is Lil Kiki. And I always use the reference that if my mom called on the telephone, she's going to ask to speak to Kiki. Really? Where Kiki at? You know what I'm saying? So it's a, it's a family name. Who gave school. you that nickname? My mom. Your mom. You okay. know what I'm saying? So it comes, like I say, it comes from my middle name. And um, I come from, a, I wouldn't say a single parent, but I would say that my my parents, it's a unique situation. My my dad was an older cat. My dad had me at 50. Mm. 51 to be exact. And um, Were so, you his first? Or last? No, I'm his last. How many kids do you think, have? I think, <laughs> I think I have many. How many kids do you have? Man, my dad has um one, four, five, six. Six. That ain't bad. That ain't bad. I'm six. still trying to get to six. Yeah, yeah. I'm at four. Are you still trying to get there? I'm trying to get there, man. She got don't, to go to don't work. Don't let him pull your leg. <laughs> don't let him pull your leg. He said he told me he didn't want no more. I didn't want the last two, but I just went on and took them. But I didn't want them. I, you came asked for that, and, and, and now I got to take You didn't have care. to give it to me. Oh, I had to give it to you. <laughs> <laughs> you did. That's what's up. Say, nah, but see, my dad, like I say, he he was a, um, it's a unique situation. Mm -hmm. He was an older cat, you know, older than my mom. He actually lied to my mom. I told him he was a different age. He looked young, you know what I'm saying? And a lot of people tell me I look young. My dad had great genes like that. And um, and it was just and so. How much I, younger is your mom? I'm curious. My when my mom had me at 28. Okay. And my dad was 50. 50. Wow. Two. 51. Yes, sir. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? When he met her, he told Almost her he was 35. Twice. Yes, sir. And she went right for it. You know what I'm saying? Y'all need to check IDs. <laughs> so, like I say, it wasn't so much of a single parent. I wouldn't say that. It was a generational mm -hmm. gap yeah. between yeah. them. So, my dad, was uh, he was already past fishing and, and, and going to right. the park and throwing the ball. He was a little older. By the time I'm 10, he's 60. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Then he died when I was 18. So, mm. you know, I kind of. I was he was a, there for a while, though. He was there 18. for a while. But, you know, we stayed in separate houses, but he was there. I got a, a great love, affection Do for my father. Do your mom have any more kids? Yeah, my sister. My mom had okay. a, um, I also have an older sister. And, um, you know, like I say, it wasn't so much about that it was a single parent. It was just a, a right. generational gap, like I say. And around 14 or 15, you got to understand, he's already elder. He's getting to how that, age. that How does that feel growing up having an older father like that? Because I know a lot of men be like, I'm going to have my kids at whatever age, but how does that impact a child growing up knowing that your dad is that older? Well, it impacts it in a small way. Well, I wouldn't say small. It does impact it because like you say, you're not getting the same nurturing as a father that's probably 35 or, yeah. you know, the football games and the going fishing and all that. It's not that he doesn't want to do it. He's kind of past it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And then you're growing up in an era where their mind thought about the. They from the era where everything is a drug. Weed, it, it don't matter. You, everything, you, you, yeah. It's, weed is like that crack. Boy selling you know that what I'm dope. Saying? <laughs> yeah. So once we, once I made it to the streets, I would say that like the song "I'm a G" is kind of true. Like I made it to the street, they kind of he kind of washed his hands of it. You know, he kind of mm. was pushed back because they from go to work, 
eight, nine, ten hours a day, um, graduate and get a job. I mean, mm-hmm. go to school all day, graduate and get a yeah. job. They not from entrepreneur in these streets. Mm-hmm. They definitely don't understand the streets. Mm-hmm. So when I was talking about all this rap and all this, this was beyond them. And then, like I say, he passed away when I was 19. Yeah. He yeah. probably told you that you ain't gonna do nothing with no music. You know, people at the older age. He probably you know what, didn't man? say that. He didn't even. He didn't no. even say that. Okay. He, he didn't. It, it wasn't even just like that. It's just like you know, this is new. It's fresh. It's music. You know, this rap. He not into that. You know what I'm saying? What's up with a job? You need to get a job. You need to go to school. Get Stay a job. Here. And I was kind of on early. Yeah. You know what I'm saying I was kind of real popular at seventeen, eighteen. I'm kind of already rolling. Yeah. So when did you find your love for music? I always How had a love old? for music. 13, 14, I was a guy that used to want to um, memorize Run DMC and all these. I was into the ivory side of the game, the New York side of it, the California, the MC NWA, the pen, all that. Huh? Yeah. yeah. Who was the first Cole. person you heard that you, you were like, man, that's cold? Well, I'm going to tell you a crazy story. My next door neighbor for a long time had me thinking he was the Sugar Hill gang. Man, I was about I 10 him. or 11. Mm hmm. And the man done the the the, the hip hop to the hip to the hip to the hip. I hip thought this was him. I stop. thought it was him for years. <laughs> <laughs> when I finally heard it, I couldn't wait to get back. Man, you've been man. <laughs> <laughs> so I was in love from it from that. You know what I'm saying? Like, and and uh, this was my first introduction to rap and right. music and all that. And he was, and I was like, man, I'm going to school. Tell man, listen, man, my uncle. Next up, he mm-hmm. this man is a rapper. He's doing this. He's doing that. So mm-hmm. that was my first love for it. Then, like I say, I'm from the from the East Coast generation of rap. When I say that, LL Cool J, Fat Boys, right. Run DMC. LL was that one, wasn't he? Oh, you what you talking about? When that radio came out, you you really like nigga can go hard. Like it was a little softer before. You know him and him and I'm gonna I'm gonna say the, for me him and Eric B and Rock Kim. I'm all that. Them two right there, they were the one the that paper, put it in. Stereo taper, me, me and Eric being a nice, nice come on, man. Like, <laughs> see, this was serious business. You know what I'm saying? So this, if you could come back to school and re- and repeat that, this meant something. So that was my first introduction, kind of the music, and then it switched over to the cursing. I call it cursing rap. When mm. the NWA hey. and Easy, I was hiding those tapes. You know, my mom would let me listen to that, and then just from that. We started trying to get in tune because I'm I'm a real street cat. I was in the streets at 15 or 16, and when I say in the streets, like I didn't. We didn't at 15 and 16. We didn't have curfews and none of that no more. We weren't coming in house. We was already. I was already having calls at 16 and moving and living in the weed house, and we bad. You know what I'm but saying? But you like, know, you said cuss the cuss era. See that's what you, I was but you <laughs> but but. You got to say too short in there too. I, that cuss Cause, yeah, because he right there with the NWA. Yeah, you you people. Cause when when uh, was it Freaky Tales came out, I remember I was in high school. I was like, dang. What's well, he where? It's basically what I'm saying is West Coast. Yeah. When the West yeah, Coast yeah. music came in, too short. Um, Easy E, you know, Dre and them, Ren and them, you know. They were serious about that. We was hiding those tapes. I was still when when the Run DMC. It was still sort of friendly. We went yeah. to Astro World and seen them. Oh, when NWA came out, you you. It was on. That changed my life. But you've been in the music industry for a while, and you've seen the um, the elevation of the rap game, where it went from rap is more trying to educate you about you know being black and you know helping you and mm-hmm. so forth, compared to now it's mainly about women killing all of that other stuff. Mm-hmm. How do you feel about that graduation? Um, it's like this, man. It's all about your preference. That's not one of my preferences. I, I I dig it, and I'm down with it, but I'm a vibe guy. Mm-hmm. So the music that I make is about a vibe. The music that I listen to is about a vibe. I make music that make people feel good. They want to get dressed. They want to look good. At the same time, I could talk about doing 15 years in the penitentiary. You need to get out mm-hmm. and do it. I can kind of mix it, but I'm not so much into pro-black activist rap because I, 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 my music is a pastime for me. You know, I get enough information from social media and enough things that I got to go through as far as being a black man. When I turn my music on, I want to be jamming. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? So I don't be really want I don't knock it. Mm-hmm. It's just not something that I've always, I'm always, I'm from Frankie Beverly and May. I'm from a good time. So even when I'm making my music, making my hooks, most of the music you're going to feel about me, that's just like my new album. It's about riding and you're getting clean and you're drinking. Yeah, man, it's Sunday and you might watch the car or something. That's my kind of music. You know, it's a vibe. And I can switch over and talk about, you know, street situations or street stories. But for the most part, my music is a vibe. I'm never really into the music that's so much about 
you know, brother, brother, brother. Mm. You know, that, ain't, that ain't me. Well, you know what? We really need to talk about the elephant in the room. Let's go. The elephant in the room, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Is uh, knocking those down with PMC. We we really need to talk about that. Okay. You know what I'm okay. Like, why the hell is this the elephant in the room? For me, right. nigga, it's the elephant in the room. Okay. So I just want to know what that was like. And because I always get me a pimp story out of everybody. So I'd be like, anybody I get on the table, they'd be like, this nigga crazy. You know? This pimp, this pimp story kind of different because when pimp came home to do that, yeah. first of all, that's my sample. You know, that's Correct. a sample of me. Let's get it. And a lot of people, you know, people use my Those sample. samples a lot. A lot. Yeah. So when Red Boy called me and asked me to do the song, he let me hear it at first. And I heard, I was like, I really didn't want to part to that. You know what I'm saying? Because like, they sound dated. You know nah, what? Not, it, uh, not the sample, what Pimp was talking about. Oh, 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 the down. knocking down. I, I was like, I don't really want in. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, because like it was a different. It was a, lot, it was a lot of beefing or something going. Mm, I just didn't want got in. Got it. You got know it, what I'm saying? Like, I was it. like, I, but I asked him, what did he want me to talk about? And Red Boy was like, be yourself. Be what you do. And knocking those down is about knocking those down mm. and riding and holding. Mm. And that's what it's about. Yeah. Right. So that's what I did. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So Pimp was kind of upset with me about it because he wanted me to chime in. Yeah. To the To the beef. Yeah, to the beef. I didn't want to put Pimp, you know. <laughs> this is my guy. I man. know. This man, he is hell on wheels. You know, <laughs> so, you know I just like the fact that when it was done, like your seasoning on anything, you Houston and a nigga can't never really mm-hmm. when you come I seen a nigga rap down here about a first of the year. It was the first of the year. And a nigga was trying to rap like you. I heard it. I seen it every time I see a nigga from Houston. If he ain't rapping like you, ain't from Houston. I'm being real. I need to... I'm being... It's a sound, bro. I'm uh-huh. telling you. And you introduced them to it a long time ago. And you probably did it because it's you. But a lot of niggas done grabbed hold to it and they go with it, bro. You done heard it. Yeah. So cool. and, and it's a thing because you 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 built a legacy, man. And And it's just like, man, dang, you know. If I come, if you don't come down and do it like this, nigga, uh, uh, anybody, I'm not, <laughs> anybody is not pimp, though. I can't say yeah. pimp. Pimp's different. But, but like, you guys, man, SUC, just all the stuff that you brought to the table, man, thank you. Let me, oh, let me stop it. right now and say thank you because, nigga, you helped me a lot of years. You don't even realize it. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> even when I, was, when I was going through things locked up, that's when, uh, um, you know, Southside, was out. I did, I went out, but Southside was. You yeah, know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah. And, but I I, got, I had a headphone and I I could feel myself. I'm like, dang, I'm free. It made me feel like I was out. That's what's up. You know what I'm saying. So saw thank it last you. night. It was crazy. You did it last night. What at the rodeo? Oh yeah, yeah I was yeah. mad about. I both. saw it all over the internet. Man, Bobo Luciani called me. Man, I'm going eat. I'm. I said, where you going? I bun and called me. I said, nigga, you couldn't have called me. Beautiful, bro. I said, e- I epic I'd moment. Came had a early. Good epic moment last night. So, you said sold out show, right? Sold out, sold out show. Right. How hard? Seventy thousand. How long yeah. is? How, I know it ain't been many of y'all in that rodeo like this going in. How many, often do do you know uh, hip hop get get pushed off into the rodeo set? Never. Mm. So how you've never seen it ever? This is the first time. Yep. This is first time from you talking about us? Yeah, mm-hmm. it's first time. Wow. And this is the thing. We was going to go to rodeo anyway. Okay. We were part of, you know, we're not into that. We, people, I, this is a, a staple in our city. You either going to the carnival, to the rodeo, taking your kids, you're a part of So to be a part of Black Heritage Today and actually get to perform in the middle of the stadium, this was epic. How did they come at you about it, Well, Bun put it together. You know what I'm saying? Bun did. That's what I tell people, too, man. We all get opportunities in different spaces to be mm-hmm. great. Yeah. You know, I do this, I do that, and... um. For him to get that opportunity, man, he was around the right folks. They gave him an opportunity. At the right time. And a lot of people just find out about it now. I kind of knew a little bug about it a minute ago. Yeah. And it, it transpired. It came together. And um, he reached out. And he could have he could have done something and made it all about him. And he gave an opportunity for the city came out, man. Yeah, that's like, dope. Like crazy. So who all performed? You, Bun? Me, Slim, Slim. Bun, Zero, Willie D, Flip. Pokey, Power Wow, Latoya Lucky. Um, Y'all shut that up. H Town. H Town performed? Knocking the Boots. Yeah. Psh, Lele. Mm. Um, ESG. Um, wow. They brought them out. 70,000. I'm going to be a boy. I'm going to tell you. Baby Bash. Nigga, I'm going to talk bad to that nigga when I see him. He wrong for that, man. Bun can bring anybody out. Yeah, I know it. But I'm talking about Bobo. This nigga came on my show. This nigga going to leave me. 
Nigga left me. You know he left that. When I get back, he, we going to do the show. We've been, no, we not doing it no more. <laughs> you done messed that all the way up. It was nice, bro. It I heard it. I knew it would be. Uh, he sent me the picture with they had. Chameleon Air. Mm. That boy performed. You know, this is the second time he done performed in history. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Since he that's called my, himself the left. Yeah, that's my you know, guy. I'm, he came out, man. It was. It was epic. It was epic, it man. Was epic. Man, so. How do you, you know, how do you process, like, when you go into the studio and you, you know, you fit to do your thing or, I, I could talk about the roadie, but how do you process the music? Like, do you, do you write a lot or do you go in there and you hear a beat or how do, how do you do it? Um, my process is a little different from it used to be. Like, I'm not one of the, I'm not in the studio all night. Okay. I don't do that. Like, uh, people tell me, yeah, we was in the studio, man, from <laughs> 12 to 6 in the morning. I hit them with what y'all doing? <laughs> You know, like, I don't know, I don't, like, I kind of, this is what I do. I, like, I get the, like, I'm going to call vibe. my producers, and I'm going to get the music. They're going to either send it or I'm going to go do it. I'm going to vibe. I'm going to get the vibe. And most of the time, I'm vibing in my space where I'm cool at. If I'm smoking here, if I'm doing this, whatever. And when I go to the studio, I'm at work. Man, my engineers will tell you, man, like, I'll be having to tip them. Yeah, yeah. You know, because... Just say it's fifty, sixty dollars an hour, man. I've been and came and got three songs done in an hour, four. Wow, you know, run through it. You know what I'm saying? So I've been in shit. They've been and done twelve songs on me and been and made a hundred fifty dollars. Mm. What was the first studio that you went to when you was young? Um, and how did you feel walking into the first studio? It was crazy because we had came from nothing but screw tapes. Okay. I mean, right. and, and Screw House was just like this with turntables and a microphone. Yeah. And, and, and people really thinking that we rapping on these beats slow. Not They going fast, just like record. Boom, they going just like they that. And then we slow it down. Mm -hmm. So my first transition was going to the studio was really going, I want to say it was um, this dude named Fresh, and he had Real to Real. Okay. See, I, boys, I'm from everything. Yeah. Real to Real, mm -hmm. ADAT. Yeah. See, I really rapped on this shit. Where you really had to, but get ready to do a song, you had to put four VCR tapes in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. To hear the yeah. yeah, I'm from that. And draped up and dripped out the big three in the morning. I done that in in the middle of a room on a microphone with no headphones, no booth. Mm. And that whole went hard. And that's the one of the biggest songs of my life. Went so hard. When we was young, we got introduced to the studio. Now the studio is much different. Even my whole album, Don't Mess with Texas, we recorded that in a box about this big that was the bathroom. We had a little room. The back part was the studio, and the front part of it was the bathroom. We went in there and shut the toilet out of there and made it to the booth. Mm. <laughs> Recorded the whole album, Southside, everything right there. Wow. I'm curious because then you know how um, y'all are very musically inclined, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and yeah. And you can hear certain things. So that song that you're talking about back then, and it's one of your biggest hits, technology has changed and sound has changed over the time, how crisp and clear and so forth has become. Can you hear the difference with that then compared to if you had redone it and do it now? What the, song, the difference the, would be? What's so crazy is, yeah, you it, it probably could be mixed better. It probably could be louder in today's time. That song cannot be redone. Mm. It's been tried 10 times. It's been, it, you cannot, first of all, that vibe, that energy, that voice, that young kid, that per, it's not, it's, you're not going to get that energy back. Right. You know, you're not going to get it any back. So the, I never really can tell the the if it's different from a sound standpoint from then to now because when you play it, it's just still so big. It's still the same. It's exactly. a raw cut. It's it's mixed. And now mixing is a – back then, they put more in the mixing. Mm -hmm. They put more time in and everything. They can mix a record now an hour. Mm -hmm. Man, back then, man, them songs taking four, five hours. So the way that song was mixed, it can't be redone. And and trust me, I've, every record company, every deal I've done, any type they of beat, they've tried it. That's their first thing they want to do. You think we can redo another? It just can't be redone. I just wonder because you know how technology has yeah. gotten better and stuff. So I'm like, I wonder if it would be better. Yeah, you're right. But we're gonna redo the video. And oh, okay. What, and guess what we about to do? We're gonna redo the video. It's the 25th anniversary of it this year. It came mm -hmm. out in 1997. This is the 25th anniversary. It was just the 20th anniversary, which was huge. We're gonna redo the video. All new football players, um, athletes, every all types of things. But we're gonna use the same song. Mm. Hey, that's that's the best way to do it because you can't get that sound back. We're gonna like use the said. same song, same just lyrics, make the everything. Look We're just better. gonna make the visual look up to date. Twenty five years later, yeah. man. I gotta ask you, um, like when you, what was the process you with SUC? Mm -hmm. Was was 
niggas was different back then. It mm. wasn't, you know, right now you got to sign this and sign that. Well, how did how was y'all processing the fact of y'all togetherness? Did you? We, we wasn't processing because we wasn't. You see what I'm saying? We wasn't planning it. Like I tell you, like the difference between us and Swisher House, S- Slim and Paul and Chameleon and all them, they was rapping and going over there. They were trying to be rappers. Mm. Yeah. You know, we going doing demo. Like I never done a demo. Yeah. I never done a um I never done a demo. I never done a talent show. Yeah. Any of that. We came straight from screw tapes to getting to the money. So so we ne- I tell people the history that we was making, we didn't know. We was it wasn't planned, man. Let's do an app. Let's do it. Until 1996, 97, when Screw dropped the first tape. Now we starting, oh, I want to tape and Kiki wanna do it. But then the times of going to Screw House and collaborating and us becoming the SUC and these different mythical figures, Fat Pat, Lil' Kiki, Big Mo, we wasn't planning it. It wasn't something like, let's get together. Man, this was hood. That's why it was so big on our side. We didn't care who heard it, if the North Side heard it, who had it, if you heard it out of town. It was about us. Then it spread it. I'm talking about the early years, 93, 94, 95, 96, building it. Now, 96, 97, by the time y'all get it, it seems like we're in theory. And yeah, we're, yeah, and, yeah. But it never was like that. We just was a group of cats from different neighborhoods that were all taking place and having something to do with Screw House. It wasn't screw saying, hey, man, y'all come on. That wasn't even studio. Mm-hmm. It's just, hey, man, we paid to do the tapes. You know, like, we're not, we not going over there. Like, we pay, and, and it's not a bad thing. We love screw. I don't take nothing. We paying screw $10. And, and then later, screw went to make a killing on them. When screw was making a killing on them tapes, man, we wasn't even looking at him like he yeah. owed us no money. It wasn't like he's selling a thousand of them and then we coming over there on Monday. Hey, what my, my um, cut. <laughs> we, wasn't, we wasn't saying that. You know what I'm saying? We was just enjoying the moment and it was taking off and I think the most organic thing that we got of it was becoming who we became and just a few starts standing out like I say that's why so many people claim screwed up click and so many people want to be a part of because it was about being a part of screw house you got some of people that were screw friends and his homeboys that just more endeared to him as one of us I tell people all the time me and screw ain't best friends but we I'm the, one of the most important people when it comes to the music side of it and what this thing turned to a music. He may have somebody that he want to play dominoes and talk shit with every day, but what they did for the music, I'm the most important factor to that. How did you stay? You you stayed kind of, you wasn't into a whole bunch of beef. I ain't never really just see you going back and you you knew how to move in the midst of this, and you was a young man. I had a lot of beef. Yeah, but I it didn't seem like you, you know what I'm saying. It didn't seem like yeah. like a lot of I, when I think of beef, I know the niggas that had the beef that I could see like a whole mixtape just come out. You know, because oh, no, no, you, no. you know what I'm saying. I always I, had a a, a a a big thing to that. One of my attributes to this is me saying I don't have no diss tapes. I ain't never. Diss you see what I'm saying? That's how I could tell. Because That's I always what? gave people the opportunity to blow up on their own. Yeah. You do it. You know, I ain't going to give you no fuel. You know, I done seen people who tried to diss me and destroy them. You know, he going to come back eventually. You going to, you want to apologize or leave it alone. I let, hey man, if it ain't causing where I'm finna lose my life or, or I got to do something to you or protect my family, it ain't really no beef to me like that. You know what I'm saying? I've had some back and forth going, but not nothing where I'm finna make a mixtape about you. I'm finna make a whole song about you. It's been done to me, but it's, it, it, it always fueled me. When yeah. it when it happened to me, it always motivated me to just not to do another one to go to, to give you something else that you know. Yeah, so you was in you you live both worlds. You signed to Swisher House. Mm-hmm. Uh, how was that going from SUC to Swisher? Live both movements. How did you how did you end up like like how what I know it was a move on, but like was it big to you that you moved to Swisher House or Signing with me because y'all killed it when you did, but that was a business decision. Okay, that most people can't make. I was more enshrined in what I was doing. I was a part of the screwed up clique, but right at that time, I had a legal situation, a bad legal situation that I needed to get past. But besides the legal situation, we wasn't in favor at the time. What I mean by that is, you know, Pat had to pass away, Screw passed away. This going on, we kind of in a situation of trying to fight back to just to keep our name good mm-hmm. as far as issues see and what we've been doing is music because I didn't drop tapes Hawked and dropped them we just kind of at a what we about to do they kind of at the rise they were steady reaching out to me to get a deal done I knew that this was going to be a big decision based on the side of town I was from 
And the main reason that I made the decision that I knew that I had the talent to take care of it. And it, and that they were pushing our type of music, doing what we do, what we made, what we built the city. I just felt like I needed to take the opportunity for the win that they just kept on asking. And I knew that it would be something. I didn't actually sign with Swisher House. Okay. Me and T. Ferris done a deal, and T. Okay. Ferris was a part of Swisher House. Okay. And, and I wouldn't take it back for nothing in the world, you know what I'm saying? But I really feel like I knew this. I was like, man, it's going to be a lot of criticism for this. It's going to be what's the best thing for me to be able to get out of it. I got to go hard. So I got to come with this chunk of the dudes. I got to come with this I'm a G. I got to come love by a few 80 by men. I got to come ABA. I got to come gangster grill. And I got to give it to them. So I don't think if my it, it wouldn't have went over well if I would have flopped with it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I just knew that I had to work hard. It was a great opportunity. And I wouldn't give it back to, for nothing. Power Wild, I learned a lot from um, going on the road with Power Wild. I learned a lot from... Just having a new day. I, I was from being drinking and smoking and missing shows and tired and not a, and this was a more professional situation of yeah. Power Wall is on time and uh, um, we gonna kiss all the babies in the room. It's a thousand people and that's gonna be a thousand autographs. We're gonna be there extra three hours and I just learned a lot about being on time. You know, sitting up straight, smart, doing it things that me coming from being SUC and just being gangster in the hood and getting this money and being a legend, but this was a more professional side to get me ready. And it was a one album deal and we got it done and it, it gave me the legs and the foundation to be who I am today. Yeah. Did you learn by seeing or did you learn by him actually telling you those stuff? No, I learned by seeing. By seeing. I learned by seeing Power Wall is very, very humble. You know, when I was in situations and got in trouble and had to come home and um he was doing he was at it was at points where he was twenty five thousand a show and he was splitting it with me. You know, to, and me, letting me do chunk up the dudes at his big shows and everything, and really doing not only just me being his favorite rapper, but you know, reaching back. And he had he had no reason to do this. You know what I'm saying? So I really appreciate the Switch House thing was a was a was a great moment in my career, even mm -hmm. though it was controversial. It did a lot for me as a person on, you know, from a, a learning standpoint and mm -hmm. and learning how to admire other people that and I went over there and did my thing. Mike Jones was platinum power wall, was this and such such. I just knew that I was gonna come over there and tear that microphone up. <laughs> oh, all right. I, yeah, I you seen know what I'm it. I, and, I seen it and, and I, I remember. That was, that was on my mind. Go hard, go hard, go hard. And I started with that ABA. And we hit them with that ABA, and it, it kind of took me back to the mixtape feel. That's what they kind of wanted. They hadn't seen the mixtape. Because so, that's kind of what happened with us. When we let the mixtape game go and we start doing Platinum in the Ghettos and, and Hardest Pits in the Litter and, and Big Mo, we kind of left the screw tape game alone. We stopped doing the mixtapes, and they pick right up on it. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. They pick right up on it. So when I got over that, one of the first things they wanted to do was put me back in that element right. of freestyling it. And we hit it big. We hit it big on ABA, man. Just to be honest, it was bigger than Love by Few Hated by Me. Oh yeah, shit, man. I, the impact of ABA was legendary. Chunk up the Deuce really is on that album. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Because we hadn't got that clear yet. We really hadn't got the deal for me yet. See, it's so many stuff going. That Mike Jones had a deal over here. Paul Wall had a deal over here. They was trying to get me a different deal. You know what I'm saying? Instead of going through. Um, Asylum and Warner Brothers. They wanted to give me a different deal, so we went through Universal. But that was a transition. I had to go do some time in that. In that, that's why I missed the break of my video. I had situations, so it took a lot. And I really commend Switch House for what they done of taking on me because I brought a lot of baggage. I came over there with a warrant, wanted. I had baggage, you know. What I'm saying? <laughs> I get it, man. And, and, but I didn't. But me being a G, I didn't take a dollar up front. Yeah, these people were platinum. Yeah, millions. Yeah. All I wanted was an opportunity. All I wanted was Gangsta Grill, uh, ABA, I'm a G, chunk up the dudes. And I knew that that would give me a platform. When I first got there, man, I was at, I had back, got back down to $1,000 a show. You know I got it. I got and got all the way back to where I got to. You and Birdman came together on that song, it Got yeah. to Be a G to the Day That I Die. What, how did y'all do? Well, what we was signed that? a Universal, and I wanted Wayne. Uh, you wanted Wayne? Mm -hmm. I wanted Wayne just on the album, period. He was on Universal. I love Wayne. I wanted Wayne on the album. When we sent it back, he wanted to be on it. Him. <laughs> Man, I want in. And he didn't. He slick. That's my bro. I love him. There. He ain't charged us for the, for the record, but he charged us for the video. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> And and I love Bird, man. That's man, my guy. You know what I'm that's saying? One of my, but it, yeah, it ended like up being it. a gangster song. You know what I'm saying? It ended up being, you know. How hard, bro? It did a lot for me because as an artist, 
when you have a big song like Southside, it's a breath of fresh air and a breather when you get over the hump with something else that they love. Because it gets to the <laughs> it point, It was hard man, to beat that song, yeah, man. It's like, hard to beat it. Yeah, I already know that. You know that, what I'm saying? You're, that's a big song. And, and, and it happened to be one of your earlier songs. So. Man, I sell a lot of records. I make a lot of money, millions. And I can't get away from this damn song. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It was time. We had, had asked somebody, and they say, I hate the song, but I'd have to say, who, who was that? I don't remember, but it makes them the most money. Yeah, they have to you know say. What they said I that, can't you know, remember who it was. You know what they said? They said because at the time that they did that, they were a different place in their life. Yep. And right now, their frame of mind is totally different, so they don't like it anymore because that's not where they're time. at right now. But well, it's not so much of that for me. Like I say, I couldn't get past it. You know what I'm saying? Like, damn. They just, hey, man, I can make some gangster, man. I'm a rapping. Oh, you go. Hey, we <laughs> love Southside. We just love it. <laughs> man, do y'all know anything else? I was. This but, but it ended up being bigger now than ever. But did you know nice, it was man. going to be? Hmm? Did you know that that was going to happen? No, man. That wasn't even the pick. Like, you know, like. Southside was we was just tripping, you know what I'm saying? It was so much beef in the city. We couldn't even do it at first. You know what I'm saying? Like we it was like they was thought we was talking about the South Side of our town and we had mm -hmm. North Side, South Side beef going on. So when we got past that part of it and then they started moving it into a dance thing, it just started taking off crazy. And then it kinda leveled off. And then when social media came back, it just boom. I got it. God just started blessing me. I own it. That's the way at, it first, go. at first I didn't even own it. You know what I'm saying? And then I own it. I got my catalog. I got my everything. And then from that, it just took off. So Wait, let me. I had one question. Go ahead, go ahead. Huh? There's a lot of um, rappers, singers, everything that watch young people who watch our platform. And if you had to advise them about anything about the industry, what would you say to them? Because I realize there's so much. It's, it's more than just going and making music. It's a lot of paperwork. It's a lot of, you know, what should they do? What's the first thing that they need to know? Find out what's for you. Just You can be in this game more than just being a rapper. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people get caught up into the talent part of it. And this ain't for everybody. That's the saddest thing about it. This is not for everybody. Everybody ain't going to make it. It's no kind of way. But that don't mean you can't have success in it. It's the same way with me. I tell rappers all the time, just because you're not going to be Drake or Wayne, that don't mean you can't live successfully in music. That's good. I've made millions in music, and I've sold millions in music, but it don't mean it all had to happen at one time. I remember when I started doing my, um, building my brand and becoming 713 and getting ready to do my own company, Self Made and all that, the, the big thing at that time was, man, you got to sell 100000 You need 100000 I just figured out, man, I was going to sell 100000 I didn't care if it took five. Mm -hmm. What's the difference? I did 12 tapes in one year. 12 of them over here. I did 12 tapes in one year, one per month. And at the end, I didn't care if it was a quarter million, whatever, too. At the end of the year, I did what I did. If I'd have woke up in January and said I wanted to do 100000 in a year, I want to sell 100,000 records this year. I just put a concept in my mind of I don't care how I get that 100000 If it's 10 on this one, it's 20. So... The answer to the question is take advantage of the opportunities that's sometime in front of you because uh, likes and followers ain't customers. Mm -mm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That is so the true. Likes and followers and 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 you know it's 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 a difference. Uh, uh, making music and making money off music is two different things. Yeah, real talk. You know what I'm saying? So my whole thing is people shy away from opportunities that's right in front of them because, you know, sometimes they reaching for some stars that might not be, man, you, you might be a great CEO. You might be a great podcaster. You might be, look at the the greatest example we just seen the other day. Where the two dudes that were Kanye cameramen, mm -hmm. Netflix gave them $30 million. Mm -hmm. I saw that. Yeah, they go. For that yeah, they go right for that there. All we did was ride with Kanye mm -hmm. and we had the camera. Mm -hmm. We didn't rap. We didn't, so my whole thing sometimes is it's a thin line between trying to figure out what's for you in this game. Yeah. And I have a lot of partners, man, a lot of people, man, that they put so much money into and so much time into trying to be a rapper or trying to be an entertainer. And sometimes that may not be for you. So I always tell the young entertainers and the young moguls and the, the bloggers and all of it, find your niche, find your fit, and go hard. You yeah, know because I've had some musicians who say that they made more money being a producer than actually being a rapper. And they didn't know that starting out that you could make so much money being a producer. Yeah, and, and listen, man, like, like 
I had to start telling myself stuff like, man, I want to make a million dollars. I want to do this here. And um, I had to live with, if I make it in Texas, I'm cool with that. Mm -hmm. If I make a million dollars, it all came out of Texas. Fine. You know what I'm saying? Until I, and you have to train your mind to start accepting things that can move you forward. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Instead of, <laughs> it's some people, man, set a ceiling to themselves, and if they don't touch that, man, they give up completely. And you just got to keep going. I'm a, I'm a true testament of keep going, man. Even with my music, it never was about the sales. Um, a million sales, a hundred. It's about believing in the rap. These 50 albums on my wall is a testament of believing in the rap. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I had 15, 20 albums before I knew streaming was coming. Now streaming here, man, all my app, my fans can get all 20 of them. Anytime you can take this song, you can stream. But I never knew that was coming. I didn't miss mm -hmm. cassettes. I didn't miss CDs. I didn't miss yeah, streaming. Did every NFT. Era, it don't care what it is. I'm going to adapt and adjust to what's going on. Just like something I posted today. And, um... A quote, and I was talking about just being consistent because a lot of people get discouraged because things are not happening for them right now. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes right now can be months of working as yeah. right now and yeah. they get discouraged. But I'm like, no, somebody's watching you. You just don't realize who might be watching you. It's just that they're watching your consistency because being a boss is so many times that you see people who do good, but they're not consistent. And you don't want to take them under your wing because if they're not consistent now without you, they're not going to be consistent with you. So a lot of times people are watching talent, but they want to see that consistency. Yeah, yeah. I, I just, like I said, it's, it's certain things that I, I had on. I'm like, I'm going to ask him this, I'm going to ask him that. But then I get in here and I get to talking to you and I'm hearing the stories. I, I'm getting caught and lost in the sauce. And you go, I can't be getting, don't put me in the sauce no more. Leave me over here. You know what I'm talking But I wanted to ask you about like just going to the studio. Do, do you, would you, when a person do a verse, would you, would you rather them email it or would you rather them be in the studio with you? Email you the verse. It, it, you don't even want to see that nigga. Well, nah, nah. It's, nah, nah. <laughs> it, it's like this. Man, I do so many. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Man, I just can't go. Man, listen. Man, shit. <laughs> this be, this is a problem. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? Because you got some dudes that, man, I ain't sending that goddamn money unless I'm finna be looking. <laughs> and it ain't about you finna steal the money. I want to then. It's yeah. for a picture. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I get it. You know what I'm saying? I do get it. But sometimes I'm like, man, listen, man. You want this song Monday or you got to wait all the way to Saturday till you get here, man? And come on, man. So, you know, now if you hear, but let me tell you something. 70 or 80% of the verses that I do now, they want to see you. Oh, yeah? Yeah, they do. They they pretty much want to. And it ain't about if you finna, they ain't worried about the money. They want the the vibe. The the what go with the social media, the post, the pit. Okay. They want yeah. everything to yeah. go with it. Yeah. Which you can't knock them. You know what I'm saying? You can't. Do you pay extra but, for that? Do they have hell, to pay yeah, extra yeah, for you that? Got man, to let me something. tell you artists something while we talking about this here, man. This is a great time to bring this up. You get what you pay for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And a lot of artists, man, you y'all... This this is and I and this is probably gonna be great for people that do verses with me because they probably be thinking this. You won't call me and jew me down. Man, please. I'm telling you, I got this here. All right. You might jew me down. Man, I got fifteen hundred two thousand, whatever. I might shoot a ad, I might shoot a free throw, cause that's what that is to me. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah, yeah. I can do verses all day. I can do an album in a day. I done it. You know what I'm saying? Like ABA, Gangsta Grill, me and T Fair done it in a day. Ooh, so 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 that's dope. shoot shooting, I mean, doing a verse is like shooting a free throw. Mm -hmm. So here it is. You wanna jew me down and pay this cheap price for this uh for this verse, and then a week later you wanna ask me about a video. <laughs> and now I'm finna tell you something crazy. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, instead of just being realistic, hey man, what yeah. is it gonna take for me to get, you know, a video, song, everything. Because the video and song is different. The song, I can shoot that free throw. Mm -hmm. That's just like boss talk. I got to come in and put on a shirt. Yeah. I got to put on some clothes. You're going to put my face on YouTube. Yeah. You're going to do yeah. all this. Put it all now, on. I'm now I'm telling you, you saying how much? Yeah, four, five times. <laughs> <laughs> See, we done worked that out and talked about that because yeah. you're going to get what you pay for. You mm -hmm. want to. So, in other words, you want this cheap ass verse. You want a cheap ass verse. You wake up, man, you done gave me. 
two thousand dollars, man, you get made a hundred million off the month. And, and that's not gonna make it's, that don't make sense. You got to make no you, sense. You got to make sense. And then let me tell you, it's, it's, it's different strokes for different folks. Me and Pokey talk about it all the time. Man, I got people, man. I just get on the phone. I got a soft spot. I've been a gamer first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, man, it, it is what it it's is. It's energy, ain't it, man? Be honest. A lot of times. Yeah, it's it's all about it's all about how you talk to them, whatever. It, yeah. You can get anything out of me. It's just based on how you do. So some people, man, just got to come to terms with the engagement of how to do music or how to do business. Is that that that's just really what it is? Let me ask you, man. How important is God in in your in your you know in in your everyday <laughs> walk of life? You me? know, like yeah, yeah. I, yeah. You see what I'm saying? Because a lot of young people need to hear this, man. I wouldn't just ask you that. People need to hear that you can't just walk around here. You got to have him somewhere in there. I don't play. This is, this is, I'm big time. I, don't know. I have to stop. They'll be going to think I'm preaching this thing. <laughs> you know, you know, go man, ahead. I'm, man. Go ahead. I'm just being real because that's a real question because at the end of the day, people a lot of times account themselves out, right? Uh, they feel like, you know, because sometimes people will show you too holy. Sometimes they, they be putting God this way and that way and this way. But really, to be honest with you, he loves you anyway, but you can mess up. I walk by faith hard. There it is. So what I'm saying is, but a lot of people think I messed up so I can't get back on. Man, one of my biggest come-ups and what made me start flourishing is when I start living by the concept, man, I ain't miss nothing that God had for me. Hey. Nothing. I'm talking about I, most of the things that I have now, he gave them to me when I was, this money I got now, I had to be mature. I would have blew it, spent everything all of it. So most of the things that I'm into now, I had to mature into. Like I don't drink syrup and all these different things. So different things that's coming to me, man, God is everything to me. You know what I'm saying? So because I know that where I came from and how I got here. So I'm not over preaching and churching with it with other people. And you know, you 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 know, religion is very, you know, touchy so I, yeah, it's a touchy a subject. But for me, you know, I walk by faith completely. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And I just live by Everything I'm supposed to have, I got it when God gave it. Was thought I supposed, and everything I don't got, I'm not supposed to have it. I love it, man. I love it. You have right. to walk like that because I really believe that God put us in the place He needs us to be to touch other people. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's a reason that you, because was there any time in your life that you didn't believe? Not really. Or that you? <laughs> it might, not it, really. It, it, it might have been. You put him my, on the back burner. My yeah, my faith may be strong. It was time when you young, you looking over certain things. Right. Like you know, as I as I became a father, and you know, hey man, I'm very big on energy, vibes, karmas. I'm I'm big on all that. Man, my son, he tell you, man, I be telling him all the time, y'all can't get no money. Y'all not in the frame of getting it. You know, you're doing this here, your seeds that you're planting. See, I'm getting this money because I plant great seeds and. Different things, and I, you know, I'm entwined in in reality of doing right. Man, you can be a great kid, you can do, but you all you're not in, a, you know. You, every time you look up, your window busted, your tire yeah. on flat. Yeah, my son yeah. Ben's just got the window busted. You out. know, all different That's things happen to you, and I bust out and tell you, they, man, you ain't in favor. That makes sense. <laughs> so, <laughs> being a favor. father right now, how many kids do you have? Three. Three. Uh -huh. um, have any of them started like being in your footsteps of music? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Great question. Are you, you mean like a microphone? Mm -hmm. No. But they're into the business. They're into the business. What do they do? Um, I feel like my older son. I feel like he he don't rap, but I feel like he's very 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 musically inclined. He know okay. exactly what's going on, what's happening, what's done. So I'm, I didn't make them choose this. I gave them their own life. I didn't introduce it to. Them. I want you to go to school. You know. However it comes out of you, you know, you love it like my, my younger son, he's an athlete. He played ball. He go to school, like I say, for computer science. You have all boys? I got all boys. <laughs> Are you done? Yeah. I need two more. <laughs> you see how you thinking? No, he need two you more. You need a girl. Daddy's little girl. You know how I'm, that goes? Hey, listen, man. My kids have taken me out. <laughs> you know, man, like, <laughs> listen, I'm trying to tell y'all, they cost, they cost way more grown. Yeah, yeah. I already know. What? But once they're over 18 and you're done with them. No, 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 no. That, that, that's where it starts at again. Yeah, that's what yeah, I'm trying to yeah. Do. That's where it restarts. You know what I'm saying? Like, man, listen, I think my kids was cheaper, younger. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. man. That going to the Six Flags, that good. 
They need cars and business oh, I now. I got to buy them. I already know where you come from. Oh, no. I'll be like, um, if I'm putting this, you need to put half because I'm not just going to give you nothing. You're not going to oh, respect lying. anything. Don't that nigga. No, I'm serious. They can, I'm, they you can get know. it. No, no, no. E14, that nigga going to get whatever Because he of want. him, not because of me. 14. I got, got a 16. I got a 16, 22. I, get it, man. All that, man. They, but, you know, what I, tr- I spoiled them. I'm riding, you know. No. I no. spoiled them riding. I'm mad about it later. That can bite you in the butt, It didn't beat. I'm beat. I don't don't got a piece of ass right now. (laughs) Shit. It didn't didn't happen. You know what I'm saying? It didn't happen. But now, you know, man, what I try to do is um, be realistic with them. And I don't force nothing. You know, I don't have to be too tough. I'll be tough when I need to. So I just introduce. I'm actually bringing them into the business now. Letting them Mm -hmm. do the merchandise side of it. Just kind of getting acquainted with being around these different atmospheres and that, but never for you got to do both. You know, you, you can't you can't do this without taking care of your business first. Did right. you find yourself overcompensating with your sons? Um, I thought about before, that earlier. Yeah, because your father your dad wasn't, wasn't really w- just wasn't doing a lot with you because he was an older you know father. Did you find yourself doing overcompensate? That? Completely overcompensate. <laughs> but I ain't mad about none of it. No, no, it's dope. See, I got great stats when I like. This is a very big thing to me. Like, I compare this to. Platinum, gold, and all this. Man, for as much money as I make, for as many shows, as for as long as I, I ain't missed nothing. I ain't missed the football game. I ain't missed the Christmas wow. program. I that's, ain't missed the pamper. I ain't missed the. I just told my son. You the saw day, all of them walk? What? Walk, pampers, pick, everything. Wow. So I just told my 16 year old son the other day, man, you know, we. I tell him this all the time. You know, we. Because we, I love to tell him, you know, I've been 16 almost three times. <laughs> Why you trying to run that game, bro? I already been fifteen three times. No, what you be saying he shook. He can't he come up with that for that. He uh-uh. can't come up with that. I've been fifteen three times. My daughter yeah. would tell you. My daughter would tell you it's a different oh, age, yeah, mom. No, nah, but see this. This is what I, this is what I'm telling. What I'm what I mean by you know, I've been fifteen three times. Man, I try to. I didn't overcome. I did overcompensate by mm-hmm. by doing, but I'm not. I'm, I'm not mad about it because mm-hmm. I, this was. I lost my train of thought, but this is what I was telling him. Man, my son is 16 years old. He been playing for about five, six. Him too, but five, six. Because I own the league for about ten. Yeah, yeah. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, mm-hmm. thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. I ain't missed a year, man. Mm-hmm. Man, you didn't had a hundred and fifty football game, two hundred football game. You know what I mean? I seen. Two hundred. Two hundred. How do you fit that into your schedule? Thing. I do don't you care. Like, he do you like do turn it. down? Let me tell you something about me. Some stuff. Reschedule no. some stuff. No, let me just tell you about me. Let me tell. You. First of all, I don't stay on the road. I've been let that go. When I take okay. care of business, I take care of business. Like like if I'm coming to y'all, I got a show in Dallas at twelve. I'm leaving Houston at seven o'clock. I'm getting there at eleven. I'm performing at twelve. Twelve forty five. We back on the road. Mm-hmm. I don't smoke. I don't drink. I don't do none of that on the road. Yeah, my drivers. Like my drivers. <laughs> they gotta. We finna turn this bike around. So I done had plenty of nights of coming from Dallas and show right back up to the Little League field at 8 o'clock in the morning. Man, I coach Little League field, own the team, watch the kid. Every, man, I don't care about no south side, rocking the stadium, getting money, Kansas City. I don't care where I'm at. I ain't missed a game. And now, they might have had, he might have had 200 and I might be at 198. Yeah, yeah. He 199. Right I ain't missed nothing. But in your, in your entire life, what would you say is your biggest achievement? Consistency. Dope. Wow. On everything. And let me tell you, um, longevity, consistency, and I would say whatever word is for, I never give up, no matter the circumstances. I'm a, um, that's why I tell people it's easy for me to accept the word legend or accept um all the homage that's given to me because I I'm I accept all the ridicule, all the pain, all the hurt, all the down talking, all the derogatory. I live through that. See, this skin, you gotta have skin for this. This skin ain't for everybody. So when the, when years when it wasn't going my way, years I'm signing with Swish House, people ain't happy. Years I ain't selling no records. Years I'm still drinking and smoking. Years I'm still going to jail. I never gave up. Never gave Why up. Why did you stop drinking and smoking? Because it was just it was time. I didn't stop smoking. <laughs> well, why did you stop drinking? No, I stopped drinking though. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> because um, it just became time. I was drinking syrup all my life, and I ended up catching a case at one of my studios, and I had just got out of a lot of trouble, a lot of trouble. And the judge was just like, you know what? We really spared you. So 
if we convict you on this, we're going to fire the 99 you. So it was a bunch going on in my studio. Anyway, long story short, they had me on a pretrial from November 2010, 2011 to April 2012. Couldn't drink, couldn't do nothing. You had to take a piss test every time you go to court. So I was just off five months. I told God, if I beat that case, I never drank again. I never sip another piece of syrup, not an ounce, not a deuce, not a tray, not a cup, not a wok, not a act, nothing. And, and that was 12 years ago, and I never, I ain't been back since. How hard it was it to just stop? I Once I got off on it, it was the hardest thing ever. But my freedom was on the line for that five months. Mm-hmm. And I had just got out of a lot of bunch of trouble, so it was going to be more of an embarrassment to be back in trouble for some drinking. Uh, and, 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 and I just got out of all this 10-year trouble that I was in. So once I got it out of my body from November, I never came back. And when I say never came back, not a sneak. Not a little bit, not a comeback, not a po- nothing. You know, people say the hardest thing is not when you're in trouble and you, you go cold turkey. It's when you come back out and you're around all your friends that are doing it. I love it. That's my, that, that's my, that's my biggest thing. Mm-hmm. That's, that's my biggest. I love it. Hey, man, you can see that that's when I knew that I was strong, and that was my first testament of discipline. Mm-hmm. When I could come around, man, it's, it's everywhere. It's cups. It's, it's everywhere. And let me tell you something. I'm not a hypocrite. I don't come to the table when it starts. Be like, what are you drinking? Why, Why are you drinking still? that? No. Nah. This was a choice I had to make for me to change mm-hmm. my and it changed my complete life. Got my family back, became a better father, became a better hustler, became a better entrepreneur. You know what I'm saying? Got my faith back with everything I need to do. Because that does slow you down. Well, it changed my life completely. I've done it twenty something years straight. So to get away from it and to get my full health back and come out of it with my kidneys, come out of it with my health, come out of it, I was blessed. So I don't talk. Yeah. Now, if you ask me, if you my partner and you ask me, then I'm going to give you my mm-hmm. you know, opinion about it. But that was a big step for me it, in my life. Man, I did it, and, and I know it was a big step because it's like it's not popular. And, mm-hmm. you know, you, you come around. I've been at places like that, and, and they be like, man, why he don't drink? I done heard that for years. Yeah. Man, why you don't drink? I'm just in there chilling. I have a good time regardless. You know, I don't need. Matter of fact, I think I'm having a better time than you. You know what I'm saying? But you worried about it? What? What you worried for? I think a lot of times people are insecure in what they're doing because they really lost in who they are. Self awareness is real. Yeah, self awareness is real, and that that really helped me out. You know what I'm saying? That that kind of saved my life on um, moving forward. When it man, I just. I turned up after that. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That just went to, like I say, man, it was just crazy how different things started happening out the blue. Man, I started getting pieces to my catalog without even having to go to court for it. It's That's a blessing. It. You know, God. shit just happening. You God know what I'm saying? Door, I'm getting, man, door. I was in deals, bad deals, and I just called the people and told them I wanted out. Man, it's a bad deal I want out. Okay. Out. <laughs> I was like, man, this shit is... God favor. You know what favor. I think that that just shows like when you start walking in purpose. Yeah. He starts opening the doors. That's all that is. Yeah. I wanted to ask you um um so in a versus between you and uh, <laughs> Slim Thug. Mm-hmm. How would you take him out? <laughs> <laughs> Slim Thug. Cuz y'all got a lot of songs and Slim I saw I'm trying to I was trying to think of who, who I would more pick. Songs? It's like this, man. Slim my brother. They work, man. Slim my brother, and he he's had he got great songs. He's yeah. been in great yeah. situations. I always tell people this. Shout out to Slim Thug, and my bro. He the most consistent on this. Let me tell you what he's the most consistent on: showing everybody else love. Mm. Okay. Hey man, show me a post with our Slim name on it. You I gonna, give you a hundred dollars. You getting in there? I don't care what. Go down your timeline. If Slim ain't on there, I'm gonna give you a hundred dollars. He he, and he love everybody. He show up, man. And for this city, man, with him being one of the bigger stars, and I get back to what you're saying, with him being, he show up for everybody. And that's what I told him at my Legends dinner. I appreciate you, man, because man, that was a dope dinner. I wasn't there, but I was on our D page. You just struck a nerve. You <laughs> niggas had on black. I'm, I'm sick of it. Now. I'm coming to the party. You gotta come to the party. Listen, it was nice. I'm not leaving, man. And I, I, and I saluted, the truck. You know I what saluted I'm everybody, and I saluted you him did. for no matter what, man. He always show up. For yeah. Everybody. Mm-hmm. Now, on the verses, I say this. Slim has a situation where he have deals, so he have some big yeah. songs, um, you know, with maybe some bigger artists. I always tell people this, and it ain't just about Slim. Hey, man, we come to the backyard. I'm going to make it tough forever. <laughs> <laughs> we do it here 
I'm gonna make it tough for whoever. And I don't, I'm gonna make it because I'm. I got some. Hey, listen, people don't get to see. I see it. I see the wall. As a matter of fact, I, I, you can't miss hey, it. Hey, let me tell you something. I'm gonna make it tough here. <laughs> here, <laughs> it's hard. It's tough. No, I don't know. We take real. I don't know. Everybody love everybody. They ain't but never it, done a, a versus with um, South. No, no, no. We got no. to do something. No, but they always we have we, I, I got I had to ask that question because you try to figure out who would. Let me be tell you good, something. The city will love it because the yeah. North will love it, the South will love it, right. and we got we are we both we both got roll all need of to that. Do it. But I always tell people, man, that's that's not that's in If you ask him, he pretty much gonna say the same thing. Bro gonna say the same thing. But I just feel like that, man. With anybody, man, in the backyard, psh, I'm ready. Yeah, I got to ask you this question because this here question comes in from a, blo a, a blogger friend of mine. And he okay. said, you got to ask him this, man. I said, I'm going to see him, man. I said, I got, I, I'm going, nigga. Uh, you better come on. And he said, nah, man, I can't go. But I, I, I said, well, you better try to get, you might not never see this, nigga. I don't know. <laughs> What's I looked up on question? What's the I gotta question? I got to get to it, man. I done, he had my phone hijacked for a second. Uh, Trill talk, no pill talk. I've been seeing him. Yeah, he now. says, what draws you so close to Al D and Al D being from East Texas? You know you're going to see it. And how does he, and how do you feel about Texas as a whole? And are there any other East Texas artists that you listen to? Man, it's like this. I, 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 um, I done some music with Al D back a long time ago. I've long, seen it. Long, long, mm -hmm. long. Well, I damn near didn't remember. <laughs> I didn't. I ain't remember how they telling me about. It. I didn't even remember. I'm like, no shit. You know what I'm saying? It, was that, it was that long ago. Yeah. So man, when he got out, man, he was so adamant about recreating what he had left off. So he called me again to do another song, man. Let me tell you something. What's gonna be crazy to you? And I ain't just calling him this, but it's like I love penitentiary. <laughs> I just like them penitentiary ass stories, man. I grew up on them. I grew up on a lot of penitentiary niggas, man. A lot of next door neighbors, my partners. Hey, and even my little time with doing, man, I love a penitentiary story. <laughs> man, listen, when I'm in the car, I, was, I tell people all the time, I was in the county jail and I used to have this cat man and uh, he did 30 years flat. Yeah, yeah. He ate all my food up because he had all the stories. <laughs> so I let it, he, my bag was open. He finna come over there and tell me about two hours of these stories. Man, this man will eat up everything I got. Man. And LD, we, we used to converse and we used to talk, and LD is a penitentiary. Nigga, man. <laughs> Golly. Man, this dude here is wild, he man. Got stories for days. Oh, and, and man, listen, I love it. I'm a great debater. Oh, you got you some oh, man. Are you better than Al D? Because Al D can go. <laughs> this I heard wild, him. Man. Boy, this man on the, wanna, I this man, on the phone he with us. This go. man debates me every day. <laughs> I, I Five, believe that. six, seven subjects. I believe it. And I tears his ass. <laughs> oh. And I tears his oh. ass. <laughs> oh. <laughs> nah, but man, listen. That's my bro. And listen, you know what? It wasn't just that. I was in love with his, even though I was trying to talk him out of his hustle. I'm like, man, will you stop selling rocks right here with the shit you doing, oh, man? But man. I loved it. I loved it. He, he believed in it. He his, meant that. He believed in himself. You know, hey, man, I want to do right. I want to live off this, man. I'm going to do whatever. I, I told him from the beginning, listen, man, you can get talked out of that shit in a minute. Mm -hmm. It's time to cross on over. You know what I'm saying? But I loved it. And I just loved his hustle, man. He just became somebody that, if you got a good sport argument, you gonna you can you can argue me all day. I'm gonna argue sports all day. So just the person who he is, and he he just got a lot of elements of shit talking that I love to cover and talk <laughs> shit to. And we just grew a good bond. And I want to see him do well, man, because he he really a rap junkie. Mm. He really love it. And man, listen, man, anybody that's trying to come out to do the right, that's just like Brewster. Yeah. Bruce, that's my guy too. Yeah. Anybody that's trying to come out to do the right thing, man, hey man, listen. So yeah, that's my guy. And as far as East Texas, um, who else? Uh, it is somebody else in East Texas that I, I, I do jam. It's been a minute, but I, I love East Texas. I was just in yeah. Mac the other day. Wow, I'm always in Longview. Yeah. So yeah. East Texas, these my people, Tyler. I'm yeah. always yeah. down there. So yeah. and that, listen, people, man, I always tell the East Texas people or anybody that's from outside. 
you got to take advantages of your opportunity. And the opportunity, man, Houston in front of your face, you got to get in that car and go. That's right. You got to get in that car and go to Dallas because sometimes, man, you know, man, out of sight, out of mind. Or it ain't that the talent ain't there. It's the resource. It's no different from when we had the resource ourselves against California and against New York. We didn't have the resources. Um, um, Def Jam and Universal, not downtown. Yeah. Um, Russell Simmons ain't um, on the corner. You know what I mean? They, that's a great opportunity to wake up in all these media. LD asked me that the other day. What do you think? Why you think? I was like, man, that media opportunities right. are much better. When they growing up at 17, 18, got they demo tape. They able to go take it to downtown to yeah 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 one hundred scope out yeah man right I got there. this demo tape I I just got it yeah she said, I ain't no telling who I can get it to so that's the difference so I'm saying that to say in East Texas sometime with the the and it ain't just us you know what I'm saying if you need to go to Atlanta wherever you need to go sometimes just stretch out win your hometown like you should you should win your hometown and then try to take that buzz. To the next bigger thing, that's right. Whether that's Dallas, whether that's what, that's all it be sometime for the smallest. But a lot cities. of play, a lot of people find love outside of their hometown first before they even find sometime. their home. Sometimes, but sometime. that not not in, not these Houston niggas different. Yeah, yeah. yeah ain't Houston gonna lie. Is these different. niggas is loved. I don't but, know how they get embraced. Who have came up? It kind of seems like being a star like, here can be a curse. I'm trying to figure Why? out because you get put in the box. Because you 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 can live so good and so great, you can you'll start skipping over everything else. What else happening? Yeah. It didn't happen to me, man. Listen, you let's get besides millions of dollars. If somebody tell you, man, listen, man, I'm gonna give you a beautiful home. I'm gonna give you two, three cars. You're gonna have nice vacations. You're gonna make enough to save something for your kids, and you can pretty much travel and do what you want to do. You don't have to put a price to that. That's a great life. Mm-hmm. And the average rapper can do that here. If yeah. You make it. That's dope. And whether that's two hundred thousand dollars. I always tell my kids, man, the, the, the dudes, they be like, mm-hmm. man, I want to make, try making a quarter million a year first and see how that feel before you just, you know. Yeah. Tell me, I want to make a making a million dollars is great, but man, you, hey, man, I seen a rapper the other day. I forgot what his name was. He was on there. They was laughing, but it wasn't funny to me. He was like, man, I make thirty thousand dollars a month. He said, man, I make $10,000 on streaming, and I do me four, five features a month. <laughs> they thought that was funny. Wasn't shit funny about that? Mm-mm. That's beautiful. That was beautiful. Yeah. Exactly. Hey, man, at $30,000 a month, you can live great. <laughs> you better know it. If you're not blowing it, because a lot of them be blowing it. Man, you're blowing it. If you if you buying a chain every month now. Let's not go yeah. too far. If I want to ask you about, uh, I want to go back to LD. Uh, you executive produced his uh, up and coming album. Uh, yeah, you did. <laughs> yeah, that's what, yeah, yeah, the word got back. And uh, <laughs> this guy. So I just want to know who's all on this new David Street album. Man, I told LD to do a real album. Okay. I ain't saying that he hadn't. That's what. That's the first thing came to my mind when you said that. Like, has he not done a real album before? Take your time. Think. Stop talking about man. I'm going to studio Friday. You got eight of them. <laughs> <laughs> you go back next Thursday. You got another seven now. Be jamming though, boy. Be jamming. But I wanted, I wanted him to just. Take advantage Take of opportunities time. of man. You gonna get key. I'm gonna holly poke and you gonna put it together with it. Let's put. Let's make a. Let's make you an album where you can make your impact. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. When you come back, when you don't have, where you start. Now, if you want to go back into the frame of every month, I'm just saying. You know, I I tell them stuff like this, like I do. Man, get you seven tracks and get two off of them. Seven okay. tracks, two off of there. Get let the producer send. Let one of the producer mess with Lee. Whoever, let them send ten. Mm-hmm. And get two. Mm-hmm. Come back, get get five and get one. Mm-hmm. Come back, listen to four of them and get one. Man, you gonna know you got everything that you really, really, really wanted. He watched me put Legend together, and he watched how man it was taking me months to do a song. I never really like I said I done done an album in a month before. I done done one in a overnight. Some of my best work, but. Having the concept of really putting, I'm real big on effort. I think that God gonna bless your effort. The more effort you put into something, God gonna bless your effort. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I was just telling them to do. So taking it, it's 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 like talking to a wild. But I say, who I was gonna be on it? Is he <sighs> was he jugging at me to make me ask you that? Because he said you got to make sure you get with him about it. I say, well, I, I'm gonna get He's with him. Very calculated, ain't he? Yeah, he, you, but, uh, yeah, 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 man. Don't go up in there and mess that up with that man. 
You know how he talk. <laughs> <laughs> I love him, boy. Listen, I won't trade that nigga for nothing. Ever since I met him, I'm like you, but see, I come yeah. from that. So I'm like, damn, man, yeah. this nigga special, dog. Yeah. He got his own way of doing things. Man, I'm going to try to, this is what I'm going to say. I'm going to get him the legends. Okay. You know, to make sure he get that part of it. And then, man, some of these, I don't even know, some of these young cats. You know, I'm I, think, only, I think, the, I think the nigga done played me. He got me to come up here and ask the yeah, question. He, he, been, he gonna get this answer out. Yeah, he trying to, he trying to get it out of me. I've been trying to have me ask you that listen, question. Man. I got it. <laughs> he, he gonna be good. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, man. I just want to see him do the right thing. And I just took that role that he asked me. I'm, I ain't. Let me tell you something. This ain't even about money with me. With no LD. I ain't good. I got money. I just want to. Man, I just want to see you in a situation where you can flourish in what you're doing. If you can put that same amount of hard work into how you're doing it, just put in it. And, man, his efforts have already been blessed. You know, he running in the Kikis and yeah. Boss Talks yeah, and he, Greg he Streets. God giving him. If you do the right thing, that's what's going to happen. Exactly. Yeah, you sound like him. That's what, I try to give him a bigger... That's because you deserve it. I'm like, no, nah, nigga, you, I appreciate it. You're, uh, <laughs> but you're doing the right. He's on just like you just said. Nah, because you he, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he knows it's the game I begin. You know, so top three artists of all time, dead or alive. That's something that we do on Boss Talk. Top three artists, dead or alive. Any number genre. one, any, any genre. genre. I don't care. You could say. Uh, who? Patty LaBelle. Oh, you love Patty, don't you? Just throw her. Oh, you Marley. know who I'm start with. I ain't just you know most people. You supposed to start with you. I'm don't care. I'm gonna put me in. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't got to worry. But the greatest artist of all time, number one. Who I finna say? Michael Jackson. Uh -huh. That's why Al D keep was coming at me about that for the longest. You the one got that nigga over there mad at Mike. Mike. He kept it's telling me it ain't nothing tougher than Mike. Nothing. Nothing to, you see that? Nothing. <laughs> Ain't no way in the first of all, these are the kind of stats Mike got right here. That's the killer. Ain't nobody gonna never outsell him. No. That's not gonna happen. Ever. Yeah, who gonna take it down? That ain't come I don't this the coldest part about Mike. Man, I had the great I had all the records before streaming. Then they just added me to that too. Y'all lot. Y'all act like I'm going to miss the He ain't miss that. It hit hard. It hit hard. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's over from that. And then I tell people this here, man. Imagine this, man. Imagine you being 17. You 18. I'm 16. We in the... This is... We love women. These girls, they hollering. They screaming. They going crazy. You 17. You going through... A, you 18. But they hollering for the nine-year-old. Mm. Wow. Yeah. I'm talking about they falling out. Ah, yeah. The women they get it. They taking their clothes out, they going crazy. I'm talking about they 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 losing their mind. You 17? Yeah. You 18? I'm talking about they going, they they can't stand. But it's for our nine year old brother. Imagine wow. the stories that Mike would have told. told. I'm talking about y'all standing out there, y'all dancing, and y'all doing everything y'all do, then slide on to the side where that where the 10 year old can get right there. He been come through. And that 10 year old finna trip out. The nigga was a legend and a star at 10. I done already passed up these Sammy Davises. Um, uh, Smokey Robinson? Uh, no, uh, our main one. Brown. James, James, Brown. James Brown. I'm finna pass him. By the time I make it to 17, man, I'm icon. It's over. My whole childhood, I got to play with drafts, monkey. I'm... <laughs> <laughs> I'm a monster monster. Uh, you're right, man. I get it. From nine to till I die, till it's over. That's your boy, Mike. Hey, man. The What's your favorite Michael song? Oh, I'm, I'm, I don't know. All of them. I'm a Mike fan. So when you were younger, did you ever dress up in the, I, the jacket? That's why I'm still and hurt that? I didn't get the jacket. See, I'm from the... <laughs> Hey, that's still me and my mama still it's into not it. Too late. That. You can go. Mama, and you know I ain't get that jacket. I ought to not buy you something behind. I ain't get <laughs> that jacket. <laughs> that jacket was everything. The gloves, the everything. Yeah. I nope. ain't get it. Number two. So, okay. Number two. Yeah, I'm gonna get you. Number two for me would be. Oh, let me get back on. Michael Jackson. 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 Michael Ice Cube is very influential. You like Ice Cube. Somebody gave us Ice Cube so a while back. So he is your number two. Because he really the first rapper that I thought was, man, this nigga is a bad, bad man. Mm -hmm. See, I liked it. Run, Peter, I liked all that. LL. 
But I ain't like him like I like that nigga Cube. It was that one. See, I was gonna only... say Pac, but Cube had some done something to me before mm-hmm. Pac. Once He's a, a businessman. It's, too, that, once not a, only it's a that once upon a time in the project, yo. Cube is the toughest, man. <laughs> like from mm-hmm. as far as the dude who could and I man, so he was very influential to me. Mm-hmm. So too. And number, and three. number three. Me. Gotta be yeah. you. And I don't blame you. I was going to see if he was going to forget to add him. Oh, no. Yeah, I, ain't, I didn't even think about that twice, man. Me really number one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just, I'm just going. I just had to, I just had to say Mike. Cause even over him. Mike. <laughs> I had to say Mike because my son is. Because I like to remind him two, two times a year. Mike the coldest ever, nigga. Even Chris Brown. That's, you know, that's the, that's the that's baby thing. Mike. <laughs> That's baby Mike. Chris Brown. Know, That's you know, baby Mike. Because, you know, Al D came on and talked about Chris Brown. He <laughs> changed his mind, though. Don't do that. Don't do that. I'll be tearing his ass up. Like that. <laughs> Listen, Mike, hey, man, Mike is so influential. You know, it ain't even about the giant. It's about, man, this is, and you know what we talking about? This is money, Mike. This is Mike. Yeah, the glue of boom, she out. Mm-hmm. That Mike. You got to be a little, oh, if, you, if you born in the, in the nineties, you that might not register. No. If you born in the seventies, eighties, seventy, you mm-hmm. understand what the hell I'm talking about. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about. Ten toe down because, with it. Because you remember, Thriller comes on every year in <laughs> Halloween. That will forever be a Halloween. And song. I just love it, man. I grew up with that, and I always look at that like that, man. And as far as a rapper, though. You know, I just always love Ice Cube. I love yeah. him, and you know what I'm saying? So I, but, but I can go on for a I want to ask you, so um, but I know you've worked with so many people, but if there's one person that you haven't worked with that you would love to work with, who would that be? Dead or alive? alive. Dead or alive. That's Prince. fine. Prince. Why right. Prince? Prince played 27 minutes. I understand, minutes. but yeah, when, I think about, when I think about people that somebody would work with, I would think about the chemistry, the music that we could make together. Why do you think that you and Prince would make good music together? I can, I can, I can rap on anything. I can do anything. As you can go listen. I'm, I'm great with, I'm great with music. It's not always about me. I will let Prince be Prince, and I just do my thing. I like something that it's easy to say, Jay Z. Easy. It's easy to say. I don't want to say something that I think probably. I want to say something that would have been off the wall to happen. Mm-hmm. You know, man, so I still Is there ch- anybody living that you would? Other than Jay Z, of course. Because you say you don't want to say Jay Z. I like I like Jada Kiss. That's mm. my dog. You okay. said it. I think That's not my because dog. of what he did. Uh-uh, I got uh, but uh, how am I about Jada Kiss? Not because of what he I did. Admit on, it, no, on the I, uh-uh. Me and him go back. I, and I could I I'm saying I'm saying that because I of the nigga man and I, when I met him what I say. Cause I'm a South, te- I'm a Texas nigga. I don't play nigga. When I <laughs> nigga, I don't play. <laughs> yeah. But when I see that nigga, I say I got to respect this. He nigga. Remind, lyrically, he remind me of me. Let me tell you what I mean by that. Not just from a lyrical New York standpoint. That's their thing. From a standpoint of he deserved way more credit than he getting. <laughs> this man, mm-hmm. something else, right? He said that <laughs> he deserved way more credit than he getting. And watch this here. Guess what I love about the verses? Here go God. You ask me that I believe in God. Let me show you God. Jada, all that respect and homage that you deserve, I'm going to give it to you in one night. One night. Mm -hmm. I'm going to let you work. I don't know what you've been through, but all that respect and homage that you deserve to be up there with Jay-Z, DMX, Nas, and all them people, I'm going to give it to you in one night. One night. Have you met him before? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to give it to you in one night. And I feel like the same for me, you know what I'm saying? I just feel like, man, I'm... I'm I'm very respected in my culture and where I'm from, but mm-hmm. you know it could be more. It could be you know it, it, it's a lot of people that missed out on a lot of parts of my career, and I feel like that about Jada. So I just feel the same, and I feel like you know most of the time a lot of my homage comes in one night, yeah, one day. Yeah, it yeah. Like, it's certain things I last night went hard. Mm-hmm. I know I got to see it. It's on YouTube. Everything on YouTube. Last night was big. It's gonna, you know, I, I got hold on. Me not being from Texas. Mm-hmm. When I came, I always, you know, being with him, I always heard about Texas, not Texas, Dallas and Houston always having a thing where mm. music is concerned. Mm. Why is that so, and how can we make that? What thing we have? Well, I'm going to be honest with you, being uh, me hear penitentiary, football. I think football penitentiary is, the pro- football is I a think big that, yeah, that's the big, that's the big, that's the big divider. 
So you don't think they have a, a have a rich? You know what? Music I don't think the saying? music is as much a divider as the football and the years and the see because it go back to the Steelers. I mean, not to Steelers to the uh, Oilers and and the Oilers and and it was a big thing way back. You know it was yeah, big. Yeah, yeah. It was something to where we would. And we were good. Both of us was good, to be honest with you. Dallas was better. <laughs> I, I didn't, I'm being real. I'm a, I didn't live I'm in been, Dallas. I'm so you, you're, I'm I know you. I'm I already get know. A crazy Don't cowboy it. story. Hi, I'm a cowboy fan. <laughs> I'm a cowboy fan. No, for real. I know. I, I, Let me tell you something. My dad, This is. I tell this story. I love to tell it. <laughs> My daddy had me at 50. Right. My daddy moved here. You know, so at 50, let me tell you something. My dad was born in 1926. Mm-hmm. 1926. So when my daddy moved from Waco to Houston, the Oilers wasn't playing in the Dome. Okay. They were playing at Robinson Stadium. Yeah. Detroit. When they got ready to build Robinson Stadium, revamp it. It was already built old, but they had to revamp it for the Oilers to play. They had men. My daddy stayed in the CUNY homes in Third Ward. That was five minutes from the stadium. You could walk to it. They had men who worked 12-hour-a-day shifts to build it. 12 hours a day, seven days a week. Promised them tickets to everything. When the stadium was built, they didn't let them get no tickets. Wow. No black men, they let them get no. My daddy don't like no Houston teams. Oilers, Rockets, Astros, nothing. I grew up in my house watching the Cowboys. He rooted for the Steelers. He wanted to, he wanted the Oilers to never get through the steel curtain. The only rocket he ever liked was Elijah Warren. So that's not me, but this is the house I grew up. I didn't grow up watching Channel Two or such and such with the Oilers on. I didn't grow up watching the Rockets or the you know. I grew up watching the other Channel Twenty Six with the Cowboys on. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that's and how they got. That's how I got it. You know what I'm saying? That's how I started liking the Cowboys. And you know, besides now, with ninety two, ninety three. Was coming, I was like, oh, of course it was easy to be a cowboy then because they yeah, win yeah, they win it. But I'm I'm a Texan, I'm a rock and I'm all that because I'm Mister Seven Thirteen. I love it, but people always be, how are you a cowboy fan? I grew up in under nothing but cowboy situation. I, I gotta ask you this, and you wasn't about to get out of here without me asking you this. Um, Kiki, the legend, the album, the project, it was so dope, bro. Mm-hmm. We jammed it all the way up. Oh, man. Did I have fun without you, though? Man. Boy, I'm about to break the window, nigga. <laughs> nigga, man. I don't play. Nigga, I don't play about y'all, bro. I don't play. I don't play. About, I don't play. I I'm, I'm still going to answer that question about that okay. Dallas and Houston. That was yeah, very yeah. good. Okay. But I don't play about that. So we got to talk about that project, man. Mm-hmm. You put a lot into that project. I did. I know how I know how you do it. I'm From my ear, what I hear. Mm-hmm. So when I see, and I love Sauce Walker being on that thing, boy. Ooh, you don't know what that do for me. That See, that do for something for me, man. I, you, I had, that was big stuff. I know. Big. big. I'm old, nigga. I'm, I'm sitting back like, ooh, that was dope. You know I, what I'm I, saying? I love that. I've been trying to get that boy on my show. I'm going to get him. Oh, you got to get him. I'm going to get him. He'll interview. I'm going to get him. I've been, I've been, I've been calling Megan. I'm going to say it right now. I'm going to get you. <laughs> yeah, you yeah gotta that's, get him. That, that's coming. But anyway, how did you put that together? How did you make that happen? Oh, uh, man. Um... I was in a situation where, man, I was just doing catalog music. Okay. Adding to my catalog. Not necessarily not saying that I'm not in tune with it or going as hard as I can, but I was doing music for my bottom line. I, I'm making such and such right now. You know, when I drop this album, I'm going to be making this. Yeah. So I used to strategize in that way. I'm going to drop two albums a year. I'm going to do this here. So, man, I dropped Self Made 3. That was the last of that series. And it kind of... Um, I just it was in the pandemic, so I didn't put a lot of features on. It just was me. And I liked the response to it and everything. But man, I was like, man, you know what? When you get to this stage, man, you either finna go into something new or it might be it. And I'm in a situation where I don't I don't gotta do it no more. Yeah. Yeah. I like it too. I like that. That's when you can do what you wanna do. Hey man, let me tell you something. <laughs> what I'm doing right now, I'm gonna be doing. <laughs> man, and I don't I don't got to do it no more. You know, I'm good. But I was like, you know what? I'm going to put a great effort in this. Because I have a lot of people that always, you know, I may be somewhere and run into a Juicy J or something. Man, we're we're doing it. Nah, I'm going to start taking advantage of some of those opportunities. And, man, I was like, you know what? I got wrapped up into it, and I was doing it. And I just went to feeling the vibe of it coming together great. 
from the production to how I was coming. Man, like I say, man, I was doing songs that were taking a month. That's something for me because I'm quick to the draw. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So I'm doing songs with a hook on it. It ain't got no words. I'm having to take this off. And even with the We From Texas song, I was like, you know what? Kiki, how you going to come out? What single you going to come? How you going to do this? You know what? I was like, man, we stand up so much for Georgia. We stand up so much for Florida. We've been standing up for New York, California. Since I got in this game, it's been real important for me to get people to live up and stand up to Texas and just represent. So I was like, man, you know what? I want to do a big Texas song. And, man, I, I made that drop. Hey, man, Longview, Tyler, San Antonio, uh, Austin, Dallas, Beaumont, Port Arthur. Man, let's stand up, man. We finna stand up. And, man, we put that together, man. We're going to put the hogs on here. Slim, Kiki, Zero, the biggest in the city. And I already gonna, expected them. See, that's why we're going to put Sauce Walk on. When you did that, that's when I was like, dang, that's a move. We're going to put Sauce Walk on. Because I'm used to seeing you. I, I know what y'all do. We're going to make it a little expected. controversy. <sighs> I love it. And that joker took off. That whole, it man, that whole It took off. And, bro, it's doing crazy. Like, 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 it's, it's like, it's streaming well. You know what I'm saying? So, that was, re- that was very big. So, that whole album, and once I got that going, I was like, I just started doing it, man. Justice League, man. Juicy J, Big Crit. Yeah, just, yeah. I just started adding to man, it, man. That man, Big Crit. That's my guy right there. You're crazy. But, but, and Juicy J, too, but... What, what, Working with DJ Chos, I be looking at you how you work, you you bridging these gaps. I'm I'm an old nigga that I hear a lot of old niggas talk about the young niggas, but I don't see the action. So oh, when I, I see you link well, with, I, with a with a younger cat, that that that's where I be like, that's dope because other people can see. Man, I got a great vibe with him because he he makes his ass shaking music. He's great at it, you know. Him and B King, that's what they do. Yeah, you know? but he can make some street music, young boy. Fredro Bang, Kevin Gates, look, he can make some street music. He very musically inclined. So sometimes I don't even know if this should be the single. I just love him. <laughs> Man, I'm making this the single because I love you. You know what I'm saying? We're going to do it because if I call him, he picking up. Yeah. He called me, I'm picking up. So I had already started that trend of doing that in the self That's what self-made series was about. Going to get all the self-made stars. So I started early in self-made one. Then when I got to self-made two, EXO, um, DJ Chose, uh, Cal Wayne, all this. So it always been important. And that I didn't get to finish that trend on self-made three because it was the pandemic. I couldn't get the artists. I was like, man, you know what? On Legend, I'm going to get the Legends. I'm going to get the Zeros, the Slim, Shout out Zero. the, the, the everybody. Slim. I'm going to put Devin the dude on Devin here. Devin was on that thing. I heard it, man. Boy, you know I'm a big Devin I'm fan, I'm going to put too. Devin on here, man. I'm going to go Power Wild. And Powell. then I'm going to go get some of these youngsters, e. you know, Chucky Trill. And, man, we man. got J-Dog on the app. Man, man. J-Dog, the young hog, man. <laughs> man, J-Dog, Stop, man. So <laughs> I, was just, I was just like, man, you know what? I'm going to do it. And one of the reasons that I do a lot of Texas artists and add LDs and all this because I remember being was on that I remember being a LD and being a person that man I couldn't get Chris Brown or yeah I couldn't get this here man and I just remember she that I was happy about being able to get a ball or being able to get Scarface or get Bun B yeah. or whatever because they was in that and that made me so me being who I am. I wanted to make sure that I gave them younger artists a person that they could get. Man, this going to be, all right, watch this here. This is a big, giant Justice League track, but I'm going to put Jack Freeman on it. Hey, man, you, you get you're different, man. You get what I'm saying? This is a big crack, track, big crit. What can I do? I'm going to go get Toby. Man, it's Toby, so cr- I'm going to get Bun. Okay, let's go Bun, Crit, and Toby, and Lil Kiki, real diverse record. So it just went to coming together like that. And like I say, man, I'm – Everything we me and LD actually finna shoot no cap this week. Supposed to shoot the last week the um, the rodeo. Just, I, I I wanted nothing else to do but the rodeo. That rodeo series wasn't it? Man, it was. I don't don't call me. I can't get nothing. I can't think. <laughs> Let's knock this rope because it was it was something. You know what I'm saying to be worried about. So we knocked that out. And um, man, the album, man, I'm. This is the first album in a long time that I was extremely proud of. Not saying that I wasn't proud of the rest. I was extremely proud of the effort that I put in. Everything I'd done from the photo shoot to the videos to the legend party to the sway. I got 85 South coming up. 
Oh, Mouse Talk Podcast. Mouse Talk 101. I got everything and just my effort that I put back into it made me feel good about it. Did a great job, man. Yeah. Hey, man, we love you, brother. Appreciate you know what I'm saying? Hey, man, it's big love over here. For, before you go. Yeah, yeah. Wife, oh, yeah. I forgot. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Before you go, let me get this and let y'all out. Man, yeah. we love Dallas. It's, I think this, um, the way we do music is different from them because we, like we say, we came from the screw tape era. And just to be honest, our screw tapes didn't go that way mm. as hard as they. I tell people this all the time. Dallas is a very big market, and their market is more up. If you notice, and I would love for them, a lot of Dallas artists don't do a lot of shows here. Mm -hmm. uh, Austin, but they go they up. Go. Mm -hmm. Oklahoma, Arkansas, that way, which is great. Because to be honest, when you're trying to get a deal, you need to break the but Dallas market a little bit faster than you break it. The deal, the the majors love the Dallas market. It's just that I, I think we had more in based on the screw tape era, we had more individual legend. It's more of a legend city. You know what I'm saying? Of all these different and and our our um our fan base really follow us very, very hard. You know what I'm saying? I don't from a standpoint. I don't know if Dallas fan base followed the Dallas artists as hard as the Houston fan base mm -hmm. followed the Houston artists. So we don't have a Dallas Houston thing. You know what I'm saying? I was in Dallas last week. I loved that. I was was there a lot of collaborations between artists here and artists in Dallas? I don't really see that a lot. Not a lot. Because like I say, their music it's wasn't different. really coming here and we have a we go that like for instance I tell Pokey Pokey wasn't a guy that did a lot of Dallas he always messed with me Dallas love you <laughs> I love Dallas <laughs> I go to Dallas a lot you know what I'm saying I go to Dallas a lot a lot Slim goes to Dallas I Swish House got a good movement in that so it's all about the 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 music you know what I'm saying how it transitions together like for instance the um we did more. We did more probably with Louisiana artists mm -hmm. because they're closer and we, we're more tied to them. But the point I'm trying to make it, it's not a, it's not a beef thing. Like right. we don't like it. We just like 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 for instance, man, different. we we embrace when 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 Yellow had his movement, Trap Boy for, me and Chief got a whole album. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Me and Chief got a whole album. I go to Funky Town a lot. It's just I think that like Big Tut. I'm down with all of them. We just didn't get a chance to mesh music together as we were going. Like our era is a little bit before them, and um, but but from the standpoint, no beef though. Do you, I, I, no. do you think Screw will ever come back? I don't say that it left. Let me just. I'm glad you asked that question because I can answer that for you. Yeah, you know, I'm gonna be real with you. When when Screw, listen, it's I'm a UGK. Listen, let me say this. Be. I'm a UGK fan, right? Uh huh. And uh. When Screw came, you know that that hey, riding dirty, you know mm -hmm. you know what it is. That's when the when the when, you know you start hearing you start hearing that that y'all was saucing it up over here. Mm -hmm. You know I'm telling it now. <laughs> I'm an old nigga, so I'm watching everything now. <laughs> Super tight and all that. We were kicking it. I, I tell me something good, nigga. I was at the Dangerfield. I always tell the story. Track me, but when it hit that riding dirty era. It was. It became real, real Texas, like Houston screw back drop man. And how did that? that that's something I would like to know. Like, what do you think? How did that happen? I know they were signed to Jive, but how did this? How did that sauce up like that? The Texas, they real Texas boy though. You know, no, I know that. So, I know so, y'all. It ain't but our street. Yeah, but so, I'm just so. saying, it, they will. It, it, it became a DJ screw, I guess, and they locked in. Or uh, how did that happen? You see what I'm saying, man. They admired us as much as we admired them. Idea. Man. That's just the truth. They were bigger than us as far not what I mean by bigger than us. I used to look up to them for this. They got a real tape. See, <laughs> see, uh, rapping, talking about a tape and having a real tape was two different things. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? See, it wasn't about money for me back then. Man, they got a real tape. I want a tape. I want a <laughs> man. You can go to Sine Wave and buy a tape. Yeah, yeah. You I want that. music. It was some music, some music city, music, music. Uh, 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 Sine Wave. Yeah, it was. Some, yeah, a uh, music yeah. asset, Sine yeah, Wave, yeah. music city. Hey, listen, big music. I was like, yeah, you can hey, go listen, buy it. This was serious. <laughs> you know, this is real know tape. It was. I man, used we to buy going them. to Screw House and we got a cassette that you can, you know, ride. On. They got a real. Dang. <laughs> you can go to the store. Yeah, I don't know how much money they making off of. I don't even care. 
I know that people is talking about, man, they hot. You know, pocket full of stones. So, so the thing about it, man, is we we come like I think, man, how we all suffered because we wasn't had the access to the bigger thing. We really out the mud. We really people thinking this clean, man. We out the trunking for real. You know what I'm saying? We really doing it like that. So I admired them as far as what they done. It, it didn't matter if they was with job or whatever. They was just learning the game. They could have been much, much bigger. But you gotta understand, we coming from a situation of of they trying to learn the business. They didn't came from being with big time records, and now they over here with job. They doing this here, and a lot of times, man, these companies always try to come change you who we were. You may sign you, but it's here. But then they come trying to change. So I think, man, that one of the factors for UGK was just staying them underground kings and. And, and being who they were. So them hooking up with us, they, they admired us, we admired them. We were listening to their tapes, and man, they wouldn't they were knocking on screw though. This is what I'm telling you. Our tapes were full of culture. You ain't got no choice but to get some shit out of there and be talking about it. We talking about it in there. Yeah. We talking about yeah. everything we doing. We drinking, we smoking, we riding, we holding, we candy. We that's what made us so big because our tapes and these freestyles, man, we just rapping about our streets, our stars, our cars, and what's happening. People loving it, man. I, I got you. Yeah, yeah, I got you now. <laughs> I seen that white car. You bet I never bring to Dallas because I got something for you on that. But anyway. That's what I do. You heard what I said. Okay. You know what I mean? Now, uh, you know I'm serious about it too. It's jacked up right mm, now in the garage. He's working on, you, nigga. on it. Now, and it, I'm it, looking it, but, I, but it's ready. Don't don't trip. When they come down off of it, it's gonna be ready. And I'm trying to find one that I can rebuild <laughs> from scratch. I built this one here from scratch. That, that I thing got right nasty, here. boy. Hey, Crazy. that's that's a cutlass. Cutlass. That thing right frame boy. up. One seventy in that token. Ooh, I, I got. I, you should have let me seen it. You, I, I shouldn't Don't be you see. <laughs> For real, that thing right, man. Mm -hmm. I got I, 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 the thing I, I could say to you about the, the 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 scene down here when them when them who was the first person you seen pop Trump? Um, the first person I, I'm now, now yeah the um, first one you seen that thing pop up and come down. His name Floyd. And he probably thought I was so weird. No, I loved it. It was. I love that. I'm a car fanatic. I'm just saying, what did it? What did it? It didn't have. Did it have a light? Or it didn't I, have a light. Floyd is the person. Floyd at Surround by Sound is the person who was first doing it. Pop Trunk Surround by Sound. That's what it got. Okay. Pop Trunk Surround by Sound. So I can't remember the, exactly the first cars that was the, this. Hey, by the time it got to us, it was already a trend. Mm -hmm. yeah, hey man, listen. And and and, 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 and y'all still yo, they stink. They stink out things. more now. You niggas done got fly. Y'all going to jail. Houston, that's the Houston Houston thing. <laughs> you niggas going to jail. I don't do that one. Yeah. I don't go that the far. The thing is sticking out like this. I'm like, what's going on? I can't see that. Do it because I think I see Slam me on yeah. this I, I, got some, the, I got a new lack on the way. Bro, I seen the damn but, thing. But, but I can't ride. I can't drive it good. So, <laughs> you know. So How do they not hit each other coming down the street? It's a, it's a vibe. It's a way of life. You got to know what you're doing. It's no different. It's no. It, hey, let me tell you something. That's no different than why do they pop wheelies and lean on them bikes? Yeah, yeah, why yeah. do they it's do the same thing? You know, why do they? Because that's why I ride on the freeway, and this is what I'm thinking when I see the bike people. I'm such a bad driver. I wish they would stop. No, but with the with those cars, the swingers and stuff, so you say you don't do it. What you mean? Um, yeah, I do them. Oh, I'm you have I don't, some. Yeah, I'm saying I don't do. They not all one size. You know, you have longer, longer, longer. I'm Isn't saying, there I, a law? I heard something about a law that was passed that you can't have it past a certain amount. That ain't that ain't working. That ain't, that ain't, that <laughs> they ain't, still do. Yeah, they, they don't I was, saying, I was just tickets? saying I don't do the longer ones. I do them, but yeah. I don't do the long, the long ones. How long can they come? Oh, shit. I'm saying something called G22 now. So that's like 22 inches out. You know? Out. You can't drive that on the road. It, it happened. It, They're going to drive it. They're gonna, they're gonna do. It. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm a little bit more into, I'm, I'm more into luxury and elegant and chilling. I ain't. Yeah, man. the older we get, that's I how we. Yeah, that's that color, that color is right. That yeah. drop, they, they drop her. Say, man, I'm not playing about that, bro. Up, man. I didn't see it. Is I that know, your prize I, I didn't look under the hood. I don't want to look under that. Really, <laughs> is that one of your prize? My prize. That thing really, boy. Car. Which one? Which one you love the that's best? A, that's a, that's a prize. That's one of my prizes. I put a. Which lot. one is your favorite? That's it. It's on TV. No, he's thinking. He's thinking about it. Man, oh, it's on TV, man. 
ever <laughs> or now? Now. Now that you have. My 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 hoop the, my I got a little what I'm in. Okay. My little Denali. Okay. My runaround is always my favorite. Really? Yeah, because I, I, that's how I'm getting that's, it. Yeah, that's how he going that's doing his thing. That's how I take care of my business. So he's always my favorite. The rest of them, man, man, you spend all that money, you can't, man. <laughs> you got to drive slow when you're going Bad down the right. street. You so, in that cut list, I'm so nervous about something else yes, that can happen. That's right. Me. You know what I'm saying? Like, man, because the when sentimental you park value. It, you got to park it all the way out here. I don't, I don't even know, park ain't, it. Ain't I no park, park right at the front. You don't park it. If I'm, if I'm there going really somewhere. Know, it ain't no, ain't no bunch. It's not like a jumping in. Like I'm getting in it. It's something happening. Let me say this. I got to say this. I'm on the stage, nigga. I got to say it, nigga. <laughs> I, uh, 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 shout out to Camille. He was seeing me at Dreads, and he say, "Man, that Chevelle, man." Oh, you, you got had, Chevelle? He yeah. Said, yeah. He said that blue car that was sitting in the front of Onyx, man. I never forget that, bro. I said, "Yeah, nigga. I knew I got you that night." <laughs> 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 that, yeah, we we. Right? <laughs> I'm a car fiend. I, I, I love them old schools, man. I'm, I'm a, a old school. When, when it comes to like them, uh, say, uh, 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 just uh, like that cutlass you got, no. it's a body style thing. Well, see, me. let me tell you something. I wasn't really going to do that cutlass. I was trying to get a 72, and I and I got beat on a classic car scam. Really? Bro, told me up online, trying to buy an old car. And, man, they had everything. They had, was a, um, they had the escrow account. They had the the, the title, the whole the whole bill of sale, the paperwork, everything. everything. It was some Russians. They got. They made five hundred thousand mm-hmm. dollars off of it. I ain't get my money back on nothing. Are I lost you, eight grand. Are you serious? And so when I came back that next year, I bought that cutlass from New York. Yeah. And I had a transporter man down there. He was like, "Man, I'm looking at because I'm like, man, I ain't spotting. I got beat, man." He was like, "He, I'm looking at the car. If you want, it, it's the seventy. I know you want a seventy two, but it's a seventy right here. I was looking at it because along with trying to buy the seventy two, I ended up just looking at the seventy kind of." Liking the body style. Mm-hmm. So he was like, man, it's down here. I'm in front of it. He was like, man, you want me to go and get it? I'm like, man, you see it? He down there with the truck. I pressed the button on it, get the get the car. Man, bring that car down here. The whole car was a piece of shit. Wow. That 70 that I'm in right now, yeah, I'm talking yeah. about, it was a, that New York had been aided that, alive. Yeah, you didn't know that. that was, I knew nothing about it. This was my that first r- time. It had in rust it. in it. Oh, my God. That rust was in it. So I'm telling they'd be messed up. They'd be messed up. So I redone the whole oh, car. Yeah. Frame, quarters, everything, motor. I'm 170 in that thing, man. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got the 70. And uh, people are always thinking, man, that ain't, that's not cap or nothing. Like, I'm, I'm, like nah, 170 worth of. 200, 500, 700, 300. I got 1, a lot in mind, dude, baby. Dude, I got a lot in mind. Hey, listen. I've been had mine a long time, hey, but listen, I don't play by let me, my car. Let me tell you something, man. It don't take no long to get to 100 no. doing it like that, bro. Not when you build it from the frame no, up. Never. So I got, I'm, I'm working on some. Uh, oh, yes, oh, yeah, that's uh, it. We, oh, yeah, that's it. Oh, I didn't know you had that thing out there in front of me. Bro- don't do uh, that nigga like that on the show. Watch this Don't do that nigga like that. Watch this here. Watch this here right here. My brother working on one right now. This is what we do. This this morning. This this morning. Ooh, that thing right too. Watch this here. Watch this motor. Hey man, it's serious. Man, that boy serious, man. Hey, it's serious. The wheels here, right too. Ooh. It's serious over here. Say. It's this this oh, you know, I sent them this the other day, you know. Man, that thing right. I like that white interior. Oh, that, I got white interior. That's Don't nice. trip now. That you don't see white interior. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, man. No, but he got a red floor. You know my favorite color. Yeah, red. he got that red in there. The I, I red see it banging. What, that, that's what caught my attention. Boy, oh, they, yeah, won't, they nice. won't leave you alone on the road in that one. You can't drive that one. They'll worry the hell out you. I and it'll be the I... older white folks. I ain't gonna lie to you. We got a car show tomorrow. Y'all do? Yeah, Where? In the city, um, with the gas guards. It's off of Oliver. Me and it's tomorrow. What time? What time? It started by ten in the morning. We might roll through. We are rolling through. It. <laughs> be on like, it's gonna be out there. No, I'm coming. I'm gonna drive my car off at about nine. It'll I'm be out coming. There. I'm, I'm coming. I ain't even drive. I'm towing mine. I'm coming. Come on. I'm it's, gonna come hey, through. Hey, me and, it's the same. Me and Slim, Slim and Les had it about two weeks ago. I took my car up there. Beautiful. And they just rerunning it again. Tomorrow. I'm coming. A lot of turnout. Gas guards. You heard of the gas guards? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they doing it tomorrow. I'm coming. A lot of people turn out. Hey. I'm, this is what we do down here. Nigga, I'm like, coming. We, we, you ain't how got many to cars? Texas, period. How many cars? Be out there. No, be out there. Tomorrow, man. Yeah, okay. that's why you know when we was in New York. We I just know. stop at car show. We'll stop. Oh yeah, if we driving yeah. and see a what? car show, I'm stopping. Car fiend, man. But it's mainly my family it's already know this cars. right here. They already know when I buy them everything that they need. What y'all need? They already know a car on the way. 
They know that. Say, so, hey, man, we gonna do this all day. We don't stop it, man. Thank you so, much, so man. no, no, man. And we gonna finish you. it up in detail. Listen, time. man. Oh yeah, you all, yes, you family now. Family. You family size. Is that uh, family eyes or is that a word? No, <laughs> no. 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 Check it, man. Hey, man, hey, I want to tell y'all, Ad love y'all so much, man. Bro, we y'all love spirit, him. Vibe, man, it's great, bro. You see why, right? <laughs> hey man, thank you so much. No, I gotta say, man, we love you. Thank you for coming on the show. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101. What a yes, boss is talk. And we out. <laughs>